A photograph does not have to be sharp. Five things how you can make your photos unsharp. Hi, it's Peter here and let's get right into the business. Photographers are obsessed with sharpness. We want the sharpest possible lens and we pixel paper our images on a computer to see how sharp the corners are and look at the empty MF tables and then compare images with different lenses and we want to use the, po the sharpest possible lens because we all think or most of us think that the sharpness is the whole idea of a photograph. Well, kind of. We will test the lens to see which uh, aperture gives us the sharpest results and with what is the sweet spot. And you know, I've, I've done that too and, and it, nice to know. But if we choose the aperture because of the sweet spot and we get the sharpest image, we totally lost. We don't understand what photography is all about. We have to choose the aperture that gives us the depth of field that we want. So that's the whole point. And how to make images look unsharp or soft and not tacked sharp? I will give you five reasons. And the first one is soft focus. Soft focus was something that was really, really popular in the 80s and 90s. We wanted that dreamy look. For us. It was that aesthetics at the time. And there were even lenses, called so-called soft focus lenses for portrait photographers, for example. Many of us think that portraits should be tacked sharp. But no, usually we want some slight softness without the image being unsharp. And that's the whole essence of... or. or the whole idea to get slightly uh, a smooth skin and then there is one tack sharp thing which is the eyes. If the eyes are blurry then the image looks unsharp and and just to make clear that I don't mean that when I say that images doesn't have to be sharp that it means that they are unsharp. It's it's a different thing and I will we'll get to that in uh, later. But soft focus lenses are quite rare and I'm not sure if they've ever made any soft focus lenses for digital cameras but you can still get them i know that canon at least had one uh, i think 135 millimeter soft focus lens but to get that soft focus and uh, that dreamy type of look is to use filters one good filter for that is a mist filter you got different types of mist filters and i've used a black mist filter on my lenses quite quite a few times because it will blur or make the highlights look softer and and one reason is also that digital photographs are usually over sharp compared to film and if you use that mist filter to to uh, soften the highlights you will get a more filmic look and when they're making movies they use mist filters quite a bit to, to get that filmic look and more cinematic look. And I think it's quite pleasing. And there are different types of mist filters. There are white mist filters. And then there are black mist filters. And I think there are some kind of gold and all, all different types of mist filters to get a slightly different look. And there are also different strengths. And so which one to use is, of course, or depends on what type of uh, images and aesthetics you like. And then a do-it-yourself way is to use Vaseline on your lens and on this one I'm not suggesting that you should put Vaseline on the front element of your lens. What you want to do is have the uh, Vaseline on a, on a filter, glass filter, UV filter, skylight filter, whatever you have and put some Vaseline on that and that's what makes the dreamy look and what I like about that is that you can you can play around with the amount of Vaseline or, or some kind of grease to get a different type of uh, of effect and maybe even colored gel, kind of like colored Vaseline or something like that could be used to make make different colors and that that's something that you could try and make some some interesting looking images. The second thing is so-called creative blur. It can be achieved panning with the camera, moving the camera, and you know intentional camera movements and uh, zooming in, zooming out while making the exposure. Putting the camera on an escalator, for example, to get the dreamy look, and you can get really things that uh, are moving fast when you're using that type of uh, of uh, motion blur in your images. And speaking of that, I do have the 52 assignments, which two of the three first assignments were something to do with with creative blur. So you might want to take a look. I will put a link in the description and, and tell you where it tells you what the 52 assignments are. So 
moving the camera around, panning and making images like this, there's no sharp thing here, but it still has some emotions and some some mood in the image. And that's the whole point of getting uh, images that are not that sharp is to get that dreamy look and more cinematic look and emotions and all that. So it's, it's really hard to explain, but you, you probably know what I mean when, when I say that. I've talked about this before and it's it's not about sharpness, it's about expressing your, your feelings and they sometimes can be a bit blurry. And then we go to minimalism. A minimalist photograph is uh, something that you you have uh, using negative space, for example. We have a lot of empty space and then that's that's kind of a blurry area and the subject itself can be sharp. So this is kind of a using part of the image is unsharp and it's uh, very close to bokeh, which I will talk talk a bit more next. But but the minimalism and, and if you want to know more about minimalism, I do have some videos about it and... Uh, I personally like the minimalism approach because then you can have large, unsharp and soft areas in an image and just a tiny little thing that's sharp and it's it tells a kind of a story of, of emptiness, of, of vast area and, and usually it is very pleasing looking images and I do like them quite a bit. I don't know if you caught the idea of, of minimalism but watch those videos and I'll, I'll, I'll have a link in the description too. And then the next one which is bokeh. And bokeh is something that we are also obsessed about. And sometimes, yes, bokeh can be a way to make images look a lot pleasing. We can hide things and make things soft in the background and give a hint that there is something and, and we can play around with with the depth of field. And, and sometimes a really narrow depth of field is something that we need or want because we want to hide things in the background because they might be distracting and take the uh, attention away from the subject itself if there is a really sharp object in the background. And that also takes us to the next one, which is impressionism. And that is something when the whole image is totally unsharp and the whole image is about bokeh. It's, it's all bokeh about the image when you have unsharp images, you only have soft edges on everything and maybe colors and, and stuff and that mimics the the impress, impressionistic painting uh, style that was introduced, to be honest, I don't know when, when that was, I'll, I'll put the years over there when it was. And that's uh, something then, and I think it's the essence of not having sharp images is the impressionistic way of making the images, having everything unsharp, which erases emotions and gives us feelings, maybe the colors or lack of colors gives us, you know, the, the feeling that we have when we're making the image. Photography is about expressing yourself and sometimes an impre impressionistic, unsharp image is the way to go. And those might look really pleasing and making a series of images like that could get a really nice body of work too. That, that would be really interesting. And then you can combine all these different ways of making unsharp images or soft images rather because unsharp is 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 something that we might do unintentionally when we have a um, error in in focusing either af or manual focus and of course there are some areas in photography some genres that sharpness is the thing one one thing is for example macro photography we want sharpness because we want to see the thing it's it's the point of of making a macro is to to show the thing and if it's unsharp then we can't really see the details and of course product photography where we need to see the details and of course portrait is one part where we want to have at least the eyes tagged sharp and everything else could be uh, really soft and that that's what i talked about in the in the first first thing and and what else do you think that should be sharp at least one thing that has to be sharp all the time when you're photographing is yourself. The photographer has to be sharp. Otherwise, nothing works. As I said, you have to decide yourself when to have sharp images and when to have soft images. It all depends on what you want to tell. What are your mood? What, what is the expression you want to show us and what story you want to tell? So it's not only about every time having an unsharp image. And if you want to learn more about sharp images, you might want to watch that video. It's not brand new video, but still the things that I say in that video are 
true. And if you want sharp images, you want to watch that video. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video about unsharp images and uh, thanks for watching and bye for now.